to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Confidence, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say yet the Lord. God is speaking, your situation is speaking, you can choose who you believe. Say it the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So it already prophetically tells you that God already knows that you have an expected end. And then at the end of time, we know how these things will be. I saw a new earth and a new heaven for the old earth and the, and the old heaven had gone away. And then he came together with us to tabernacle in that city. Christ himself being the light of that city. We know the end of time. So with all the confusion and all of these things, everything that is a breaking news is an old news based on scripture. The Bible already told us there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars for instance. But the Bible also tells us, nay, in all these things, you are more than conquer so when we act confident in an uncertain world we look like fools except that our wisdom is superior because it comes from the authority of scripture there is prophecy that backs us it gives us hope and hope does not make a shame you see how it is so next time someone tells you I'm a matured Christian Tell him I, I would not argue with you. Number one, what is Christianity about? Who is Jesus? Why is he here? Anybody who cannot defend Jesus is not even born again. Not even to talk of maturity. Number two, what are the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer? What are they? How can I know that my tomorrow is great? It's a terrible thing to live in an uncertain world. Even at death, the Bible still tells us that we are victorious. It secures us all around. For me to live is Christ. And even in death, it simply becomes for me a door to a higher and a superior realm. So in any case, we find comfort. Is that true? Yes. So you don't fear death. Why? Because in the kingdom, we call death sleeping. And they that sleep, sleep at night. When you are sleeping in the afternoon, it's called siesta because you should wake up. So they that sleep, sleep at night. They use the day to walk. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. Why? Because at that night you sleep. And there are two ways to sleep in the kingdom. Number one, you sleep in the mystery that we call death or Jesus Christ comes to meet you. In any case, you have slept. He told John, he said, no, 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 not everybody will taste of this death physically. But one thing for sure is those who have died and we who are alive, we will all be changed. But the protocol is that those who have died in Christ will be given that honor because they have tasted of this. So they will arise and we who are alive and remain, the Bible says, will be caught up with him. That's 1 Thessalonians 4 or 5. It says, comfort one another with this scripture so all round i'm just showing you the the formidability of this faith life many spiritual practices do not have security above this realm when you are gone they just say you have gone to all kinds of places but we know where we are going to is that true Why will you not want to come to Jesus with this kind of provisions? Your destiny, your future, your eternity, everything is secured in Christ. This is why Satan fights the gospel. Please pay attention. 
this is why satan will do anything to make sure your loved ones are not saved this is why satan will do anything to make sure that you do not rise this is why satan will do anything to make sure you don't have the prosperity it takes for your comfort and for the gospel can i tell you this um I, this is not to glorify satan but you see you need to study how visionary satan is there is nothing that he does that is for itself everything he does is connected to one big goal to stop the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same ask satan why do you fight prosperity that's the same reason why do you fight the bodies of men same reason why should the woman not have a child satan does not have any business with the child his concern is that anything captured in your life please pay attention anything captured in your life becomes satan's business if he finds out that there is potential in it to reveal jesus and to glorify jesus let me repeat that means satan has no business with your job he has no business with your health he has no business with your children if he does not think there is something in need to bring glory to the name of the lord the moment satan finds out that there is something in your life that he suspects he doesn't have to wait for you to be born again he suspects that one day with this talent you have if you ever get born again he will not wait until you get born again he will begin to attack it satan is not motivated by many motivations there's something you can learn from him there is a singular motivation he's motivated by one agenda to stop the revelation of jesus christ and to stop the glorification of the same can i tell you this if god takes everything that can reveal him in us satan will pass you like this and you will beg him to come and you'll say no he will go to look for where next that glory went to so he's not just looking for you because of you if you don't understand what i'm teaching you will not even understand tonight's teaching at all who have i offended that my life is like that you will stop that kind of statement after a revelation like this you see that now because listen listen i'm not saying those who say that are bad but that's why you came to church the church is a place of enlightenment the condition for an attack is that there when satan finds out that you were created in the image and the likeness of god as a baby he pursued children you are an adult satan pursued children who could not beg they could not talk they could only suck breast he said kill them don't wait until they grow every child was created in the image of god and i know that one day if that prophet and apostle and everybody arises we're in trouble and now you have become an adult you can use your will in partnership with the holy ghost he will not let you go easily ah but thanks be to god but thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph there will be no need for all the arsenals that are given to the believer to make for victory experientially if there was no adversary who is determined to destroy us the bible says john chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for do you know what this means my goodness do you know that i've not even started well we're in church god is speaking if this is all i say we'll close our bible and discuss it next week but i have to drum this thing because this is how to grow are you getting blessed the thief cometh not just let's let's deal with those first four words that means you have no business seeing the thief if there is nothing that is worth stealing nothing that is worth killing nothing that is worth destroying you get the idea now that means the thief is so selfish if you ever see him he comes to you as a verification that there is something in your life that is worth stealing killing and destroying every time you see satan come around you he has already confirmed to you that you are not ordinary this is what the bible is saying hear me that means 
if without engaging the weapons of victory you are free from satan it means something is wrong with you your freedom should not come from any negotiation with him your freedom should come by superimposing dominion that means if satan sees you without engaging the weapons of victory he should attack you that is proof that you were created in the image of god there are many people who are not facing any attack because they are cold they are lazy they are unserious they have checked you and found out that you don't have any relevance as far as kingdom comes is concerned it's not because you are special you are not praying you are not fasting you don't know the lord you are not serious and yet you are not attacked don't be flattered the devil has found that he's focusing on those who can come and save you before he comes to you I was glad when they said unto me you see that church is a good place it truly is please sit down so the thief cometh not but for to steal please give it to us again to kill and to destroy Jesus contrasts it and says I am come that they may have and they may have it more look up there is a difference between life and abundant life oh what is getting me into this thing this night life and abundant life listen carefully by the way well since this is koinonia let me just caution you lovingly over some of these blind shouts that sometimes when the word of god is coming the energy it takes to receive is the same energy you are wasting in unnecessarily shouting there is a listen i won't say this anywhere this is this is home and god is training us are we together yes we must be thoroughly furnished sometimes i'm, I'm not i don't mean to insult you but but just listen to if if he's to laugh when he's laughable all of us know but some of these shout most times people who do these things are not getting it I'm saying most times not all the time and please don't feel bad I'm not I'm not this is a family no one condemns anyone but it's just a it's just an honest honest word of caution hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Am I seeing well? Is that Her Majesty? I'm so sorry. Please let's celebrate her. Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Wari. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My sincere apologies. Yes. They are part of us. We are family. It's good to hear this kind of thing and turn any kingdom through faith, subdued kingdom. Praise the Lord. Are we together? God bless you, Ma. Thank you. Such an honor to have you around. Where was I? I was cautioning. I was cautioning and, and calling for diligence as the word of God. Listen, two people acted this way in Jesus' days. Mary and Martha. Is it in your Bible? Remember the things that are written at four times, they are for our learning. Martha was running around doing all kinds of things and she was not getting it. Mary sat quietly and was listening. Here's what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about so many things. But he says this one thing, one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to sit down at the master's feet. Now please look up. Because it is true that this kingdom operates by knowledge, number one. Because it is true that you were created in the image and the likeness of God number three because it is true that there is an adversary and the Bible is not silent about him God decided to invent a formula to ensure that believers remain victorious and that formula is the Word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit in partnership with gifts men and women of God who he has sent are we together now yes that when god grants you access to a spiritual family god grants you access 
to spiritual voices god gets you access to scripture he grants you access to the holy spirit he has supplied to you the weapons of victory the men and the women of god interpret scripture they instruct you according to jeremiah 3 15 in knowledge and in wisdom that is their assignment to feed you to give you that spiritual nourishment are we together so they give you understanding they give you knowledge the word of god opens you up the holy spirit comes to back you among the many things that the holy spirit does he is the custodian and the administrator of the anointing everything that has to do with the anointing is in the office of the holy spirit what is the assignment of the anointing i have taught you here the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of god does not look like a lie so if there is no word that proceeds the anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to validate the claims of jesus as revealed in scripture so when the bible says god heals now the anointing comes to prove that that statement is true if god says i am able to lift men you see why the anointing follows the word this is the biblical strategy for administering the anointing there must be a statement that you must put on ground first something the bible says should be done then the anointing you can beckon on the holy spirit now just dispensing the anointing without a scriptural basis the devil will easily steal into that atmosphere and delve people into superstition and all kinds of extra biblical manifestations and there are sincere and well-meaning people who are victims of this why because they were not methodically discipled they were not methodically mentored hallelujah so everything that we share week in week out uh, among other factors spiritual arsenals that are equipping you why are they equipping you so that number one you have enlightenment knowledge but number two so that you will know how to use these tools that have been given to produce results why are your results important John chapter 15 and verse 8 John chapter 15 and verse 8 this is why you need results in your life herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples why do you need results in your life matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 the bible says you are the salt of the earth it says is that true the salt of the earth that means you add value and you preserve your territory you are salt you need that result it then says that you are the light of the world the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world there are names that are exclusive to god alone man cannot claim that name but when it has to do with light both god and man are light there are names that he freely shares with us one of it is he is the son of god we are sons of god one of it is his light we are light Are we blessed do you know why i believe the holy spirit just took me this route because everything that we teach in this house by god's grace must be seen with respect to all the things that are aforementioned when you begin to teach believers mysteries in the kingdom that are not connected to a larger body of truth the, this is where carnality comes in for instance if you begin to teach on things like maybe say wealth and prosperity you begin to teach on things like career destiny and the rest teaching it in isolation to kingdom come teaching it in isolation to the revelation of jesus will only fuel the existing lust in many people you see why some of these teachings seem to destroy but when it is brought in perspective then you see that Jesus is glorified, Jesus is revealed. Hallelujah. Can we teach tonight now? Father, open my eyes and let me see. Please lift your voice and pray. For the way of the Lord is the way 
of wisdom. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I felt very strongly stirred. By the way, a series on the various graces, there's one more left on love, but I suspended it because there is another series that you'll be part of. There is a grace that can cause men to love God and to love men. It is a grace that is at work in this house and um, but we'll leave it and attach it to another series that is coming. Is that true? Tonight, very briefly, and then we'll pray. I'm teaching on the spiritual pathway to greatness. Please, I pray that you pay attention. This is a very powerful teaching that will be relevant both for you, your loved ones, and those who are connected to you. It is important that we learn the ways of God the Bible says that in the last days when the mountain of the Lord is lifted above every other mountain and every hill it says nations will come and men will say come let us go to the mount of the Lord the house of Jacob and he will teach us his ways the spiritual pathway to greatness the Bible clearly tells us that everybody has a great destiny in Christ. Everyone born of God and everyone currently walking upon this earth right now has a great destiny in Christ. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, Paul was speaking and he made a quotation that was referring to Jesus but then by extension to his church and to believers in general. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O God. That means there is no such thing as happenstance or mistakes. That everybody who came has something connected to their lives and their destinies as far as God is. God's predeterminate counsel is concerned. No one walking on the earth is useless. No one walking on the earth, regardless how you arrived here, provided you made it here, there is an allocation as far as destiny is concerned for you. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is very important. The Bible lets us know that in Christ, that we can have great destinies, and that greatness is the heritage of the saints. Not just godliness, but greatness. These are some of the benefits and the provisions that we have as sons in light. The heritage of greatness is our birthright. The heritage of greatness is God's desire for every single one of us. Are we together? Philippians chapter 3, please. Let's read from verse 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 lets us know we have a great destiny. I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I reach forth to those things that are before. Uh -huh. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling. Apostle Paul says that he has a high calling. His calling is not an ordinary calling. His calling is a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Everyone say, I have a high calling. One more time, say, I have a high calling. That means there is nothing ordinary about your life and my life as far as destiny is concerned. How about the heritage of greatness? Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13. It says, and the man works great. Say amen. amen. And went forward. Say amen again. Amen. 
and grew until he became very great a version says and he began to be great that means there was a day he was not the man works great he went forward he grew until he became very great why because isaac was coming from abraham and there was that covenant of greatness genesis 17 and verse 6 genesis 17 and verse 6 our heritage of greatness and an enviable destiny in christ i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee say amen, amen. and kings shall come out of you amen. this is a promise now you see whilst you hear the holy spirit reveal this to you you are tempted and even manipulated by the devil to think of your background and you're looking at where you're coming from you're looking at all the things that have happened in and around your life and like nathaniel you can say about yourself like he said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth let's start the scripture in psalm 71 and verse 21 the Bible even tells us that not only does God desire for us to be great, but that the greatness He's given us can still increase. He says, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. So we are examining the spiritual pathway, having established the fact that we have a high calling and we have an enviable destiny in Christ. We have established the fact that it is not sin and it is not anti-christ and anti-god for the saints in light to desire greatness because god put it in everyone to be great is that true hallelujah genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 this is the beginning of the encounter that abraham who was an idol worshiper from or of the chaldeans he would meet the God of the Hebrews who would later become his God and have a covenant with him that would be, become the basis for the coming of Jesus and even our redemption. 12 verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. If you love Jesus, read verse 2 with me. Ready? Read. And I will make of thee a great nation. Uh -huh. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Just stop there. As at the time he was telling Abraham this, it had not yet happened to him. This was a prophetic word tied to conditions that if met will release and actualize this word. Are we together now? So he's telling Abraham, I know you are an idol worshiper and you have your house, your family, but I have chosen to call you. Now, when you study from scripture, the first person that was called was not really Abraham. It was his father, Terah. But the father did not meet the condition that made for this blessing. And now God comes to call Abraham. Come out of your father's house. Come out of all of these places because this is what I want to do. This is your destiny. I want to make of thee a great nation. I want to bless you. I want to make your name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. In fact, let's read verse 3. Verse 3, please give it to us. It says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. There is a revelation here I want you to learn. For every one person who curses you, there are many them who, blesses, who bless you. You see the ratio i will them that bless you him that curse you there are always more people willing to bless you and partner with god over your life than one person who may want to curse you so if the person in your village is one we are here the family is here the angels are here and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed now you may be tempted to say that this is just for abraham but Paul gave us perspective in his Pauline epistle that when God made this promise, it was to Abraham and his seed, D, that seed being Christ. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
that means what he told Abraham through Christ can become our reality you see the connection now it is from Abraham through Christ now it is our reality so greatness is our destiny and when I say greatness I don't mean some of this carnal pursuit for greatness that has no kingdom perspective remember that we already gave a background tonight that everything that we seek and everything that we communicate it is the whole counsel of God but it is res with respect to the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same it says and I if I be lifted from the earth I will draw all men is that true and I've shared with you that one of the ways that God gets glory is by glorifying the sons every father is glorified when his sons are glorified John 17 and verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed a prayer and he said father the hour is come here is the protocol for God being glorified glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so if the sons are not glorified the father cannot be glorified this is the principle of shared dominion the father does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the son the son does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify herself her glory comes from her dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers inclusive so everyone in the Kedah has the glory that they receive dominion over creation is how the glory of the church is revealed the dominion of the church is how in partnership with the Holy Spirit is how the Son is glorified and in the glorification of the Son the Father is glorified no confusion this is the protocol have we learned today but there is a biblical pathway and I'll be very fast over this so that we'll pray many believers do not know that there is a protocol to greatness they desire to be great in ministry they desire to be great in business in career and so on and so forth and for many people um, we just guess and shadow box our way and we are not able to attain that level of spiritual efficiency to rise so that we can do much for the kingdom now in your desire to be great the first information i want to bring very quickly tonight is that with respect to greatness there are two principal seasons in the life of everyone with respect to greatness with respect to the subject of greatness there are two principal seasons in the life two principal seasons are you ready the season number one is called the season of preparation please write it down the first season that every believer in Christ who desires to do much for the kingdom especially at this end times there is no instant manifestation in the kingdom the season of preparation please pay attention to the things you'll be learning the season of preparation It is important for you to know that if you are not prepared for anything on the day of manifestation you will fail is that true even in our, our human context there are students who prepare for exams and they excel there are people who have to prepare for interviews for promotion and if they prepare and they do write the interview or whatever it is in whatever form the interview comes when they excel they are promoted and then they increase in rank that is how it is also in the kingdom two major seasons very quickly the season of preparation now there are three phases under this season i want to rush very quickly there are three phases under this season of preparation the first phase is called the face of discovery please pay attention the face of discovery you will never be able to actualize destiny and you will never be able to walk in the fullness of your call until you go through this phase of discovery please look up many people violate this phase of discovery 
and yet they want to be mightily used by God yet they want to become influences and references across territories it does not happen that way this is the spiritual protocol non-negotiable no exceptions the season of preparation and the first phase in that season is the season of discovery are we still together what do you discover number one your first discovery in life if you want to be great is to discover God discovery God God Almighty that encounter with the God of the Bible is the first thing anybody who wants to be great the kingdom's way you must go through that phase of discovery hear me the first thing you discover is not the family you come from in order of importance the first thing you discover people discover all kinds of things but God the scriptural basis for this is found in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God that is the spiritual protocol Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning the first four words recorded in the Bible in the beginning of anything you start with God in the beginning of business God in the beginning of ministry God in the beginning of marriage and a home God in the beginning of parenting when you violate that formula you have compromised on greatness God's way now you can route greatness through some other formula and then face the consequences of the side effects that come with them dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and Nakata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.